Bartenders are movers and shakers. Most compliment the hurried pulse of the restaurant kitchens, but when there's a chance to connect with guests, their purpose becomes much more. So, this got me thinking, what are the craziest confessions bartenders have ever been told? I reached out to Lynette Marrero, cocktail director of the Lively Llama Inn, a trendy yet laid-back Peruvian barrio in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Its unconventional design has massive floor-to-ceiling windows showcasing a beautiful dining space with cozy wood banquettes, a chic bar area, and an open kitchen. Come with me as I join Lynette at the bar. We'll pour a few drinks and dish out her most memorable stories on this episode of Pour. Well, Lynette, thank you so much for um, having us come in, and I'm so excited about this. I've heard amazing things about the purple disco. <laughs> so we call it the flying purple disco, and for okay. me that comes from the flying purple tea leader, awesome. you know, which is just one of those fun, crazy, whimsical ideas. And the cocktail when we, um, when Jessica Gonzalez and I is my business partner on this project, when we first met with uh, Chef Eric Ramirez, we were really inspired by uh, his grasp and use of the Peruvian flavors. Um, so everything he had was traditional with a skin. So we really felt that we wanted to kind of take some concepts from there. So I'm, I'm a nerd when it comes to like putting food ingredients in drinks. And so awesome. I was like, what if we take, you know, purple potatoes and use that for texture? Um, and also then for a beautiful color. So that adds to our, um, our Pisco Sour, which we work tirelessly on the right recipe um, in-house to make happen. And, and we just love this drink because it's a, a sexy little, a little, sexy little Pisco Sour. Who can go wrong with sexy? Exactly. <laughs> So to make the flying purple pisco, um, like I said, it's based on the traditional pisco sour. Half ounce of lemon and half ounce of lime. And then we're gonna add just a quarter ounce of the gumbo. And then I'm gonna add that puree and we use a little ice cream scooper to measure it out. We're gonna add our egg whites. When adding egg white, you always put it in the separate tin. And then our pisco, of course. So our pisco is an unaged brandy. So we're gonna pre-emulsify our drink, which means we're going to kind of get the citrus and the egg white together, and then we have the ice, a really nice big shake. This is our beautiful Tiberni glass, which is a kind of a beautiful fizz glass that we have here. Uh, and then we garnish it with a little bit of nutmeg, again, bringing up some of those aromatics, and then some bitters on top. So you kind of get this really beautiful, you can play with the design of your bitters, some people like to make flowers, and then you enjoy your cocktail, and that's your flying purple pisco. So I'm sure that you've come across really great stories or experiences, whether you know they've made you laugh or cry or just been like, what the heck was that? <laughs> With like different conversations, so please, share. So I think what's, what's awesome about being a bartender is that we are introduced into people's world in a very different way. Um, you know, and that's kind of what I love about people and I think every industry that I've been in from being in theater to studying psychology in college is all about people and how they present themselves and when you're behind the bar and that relationship of you know the guest to a bartender really is a very different relationship and you're led into people's lives in a way that's very different from you know a day-to-day -day interaction and yeah. it's, it's kind of great to see you know? but you know bars are bars are a great place and I actually cliche I met my husband actually <laughs> working. Oh no way! So he first came in uh, and actually I met him Two weeks after my ex, my college boyfriend and I, my ex boyfriend of five years and I broke up. Wow. You know, he came in with a friend of his, and they were two good looking guys having dinner at a wine bar. I didn't know why they were having dinner at a wine bar. So, oh, okay. being from the theater world, I'm like two good looking guys going out to dinner, like a kind of romantic feeling dinner. Right. They must be gay. So I was like, all oh, friends, all oh, like personality <laughs> is like. Uh, and um, they kind of played this whole game to try and get what my name was, and there okay. was another table sitting next to them, kind of helping them out. So towards the end of the meal, Ty. He's asked me very in a very ambiguous way, he's like, what are you doing tomorrow? And I said, oh, I'm hosting here, actually filling in until one in the morning. Okay. He thought I was blowing him off. So, <laughs> so the next night he didn't show up. Um, after he leaves, the, the girls sitting next to him like, that guy I was into you, his name is Ty, that was his friend Arrow, they were here for his birthday. Two weeks later, randomly, he had been out with his friends and the same guy Arrow who he had uh, dinner with that night, uh, it was a private birthday party for ended up being his boxing teacher. And Ty turns around and he's like, I think I've been here before. Oh yeah, like we came in here once before and uh, had dinner and the waitress is really hot and he turns around and I'm standing right there. And I'm like, Ty, right? And he's like, 
Uh, so after prodding and pressuring from his friends, be like, dude, just ask her out. She remembered your name. He's like, no, no, you have to wait. You have to come in more times. They finally pushed him to uh, ask me out, and we went out two days later. And then it was holiday break, and he called me every day from you know from Wyoming, and and called me. And then when he came back, we just kind of started dating and awesome. got married a year and a half later. Oh my God, that's fantastic! <laughs> so I married the rebound, but it's <laughs> the a, rebound. It's the, we've married 12 years, so it's been uh, the longest rebound ever. Oh, that's good. The longest rebound ever. Hashtag. It's not like the typical. Um, I was talking to one bartender, and she was saying, I've had. Um, so many people hit on me with like the lamest lines and everything and you actually you weren't really hit on I was lucky <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I found like the guy who knew how to like properly court a bartender exactly. and you know and I, I think it's a lot harder too you know I think even with today's landscape it's a lot harder with all the apps right. um, out there but oh my you know so you're imagining that everyone has like 12,000 people but I do think that old-fashioned meeting someone in a bar mm -hmm. you know that's that's a great sure. place to still meet people you know but sometimes you get into some really strange things I was actually um, talking to my friend Amber, the one who she now is mom of two, living in Oklahoma City, and she sent me a text. She's like, I miss you, I miss New York. I was like, oh man, I'm like, Amber, do you remember any like really crazy stories from when we were at Sabar? I'm like, that bar was so insane. Like, I remember just, you know, working New Year's Eve there. It'd be oh, wow. crazy. and would be popping bottles of Le Grand Dame champagne for people. And the guys that would come in there, and the, and the industry was very, like, banker baller. This girl was, like, it was pretty late, so I'm sure she just had a bit to drink, and some guy just really got got to her and was like, either trying to pick her up, and we were trying to remember like why, but she started like talking, like getting in an argument with him, and then she just pulled up her shirt like she was gonna fight, and then took off her bra and like was what? ready to fight him like bare-breasted, and we're like, what in the world? I don't. I'm like Amber, why on earth? And she's like, I don't remember. But that was, I was like, man, I'm like, she must have had too many like green apple martinis that night. At least. Oh my God. So it was a kind of funny little world, but I think what's great too is like now you see people who are much more professional at uh, enjoying their cocktails. Yes. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. Awesome. Come thank on you. back to El Tacho anytime. I absolutely will. <laughs>